to other issues now in recent years conflict insecurity the effects of climate change have heavily contributed to the forced movement of people whether within countries or across borders over 59 million people were internally displaced at the end of 2021 Regardless of the reasons that compel people to move, migrants and displaced people represent some of the most vulnerable and marginalized groups in society and are often exposed to abuse and exploitation. They have limited access to essential services, including health care, and are faced with xenophobic attacks and stigma fueled by misinformation. In addition, many migrant workers are often in temporary, informal, or unprotected jobs, which exposes them to a greater risk of insecurity, layoffs, and poor working conditions. Uh, due to a persistent lack of safety and regular migration pathways, millions continue to wait, take perilous journeys each year. Since 2014, more than 50,000 migrants have lost their lives on migratory routes across the world. Despite this, migrants have proven to be a source of prosperity, innovation and sustainable development to countries of origin and transit and in host countries. Their financial contribution through remittances offers a lifeline to families and spur local markets, especially those of low and middle income countries. Their role in the labor market remains invaluable as evidence on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic response. Their knowledge, network and skills have greatly contributed to the development of resilient communities. Now, Sunday, December 18, is International Migrants Day. I have joining me now the Chief of Mission for the International Organization for Migration in Nigeria, Laurent Duberg. Thank you so much for being here. Nice meeting you. Thank you. And you've just, you've just arrived in the country, but you're coming from Egypt, you know, where... Um, I would say with any African country, uh, migration is a big issue. Uh, people are constantly leaving. Um, people left in 2014 in, in, well, you ask us not to use words like droves or in large numbers mm. and so on, but a lot of people have left the continent and using these dangerous migratory routes. Um, what is the situation now? Unfortunately, this is continuing, um, despite the efforts made. Well, there is much more of interception, rescue at sea, but there is a need to continue um, increasing those uh, methods of trying to prevent people to actually believe in traffickers and smugglers, but we see an increase because of the economic pressure on, the, on them. Despite the fact that smugglers we know have increased their prices, people are paying and getting in debt more and more for actually uh, crossing uh, borders irregularly or uh, reaching uh, another country, believing that it's, it's where they, their life will be better. And we see, we see some of the videos, you know, sometimes we come across them. Uh, for example, it was this week that about um, four migrants lost their lives on the English Channel, trying to Absolutely. cross, you know, from, mm. uh, the, from France all the way to England. And a lot of people are very desperate you know, about crossing, you know, those, those harsh waters. And people are also confused about, you know, what role the IOM really plays. So do you aid the migration or do you stall it? Well, um now, we try to make the migration what we call orderly. It means that actually we promote migration as an important tool for development. So we work with governments, but we work also with the society. But we have to, it's, it's very difficult balance to find because by uh, promoting migration as a positive element, people will believe that indeed it's the case, whatever way or the journey would be. So we have also to balance and explain that they, it's true if it's well prepared, informed, and there are certain conditions to fulfill. So we are constantly in battles with those smugglers which are use, who are using these systems for saying, look, an organization is telling you that it's good you migrate because it will serve you, it will serve the country of origin, the country of destination, then just believe us and we will help you facilitating because we have to admit that it's not necessarily easy to migrate regularly or legally. There, there, there are important a number of people who are willing to. It's not everybody who will be selected. Actually, countries are looking for certain skills. Not everybody. It's not that they can, or they fear that accepting some will result in a massive migration. And they have to also consider the situation of their electorate. They are not everybody, even if governments may understand they need people in the workforce because 
some European countries, for example, are becoming older and older. So they need workers indeed, and they know. But they know that they can't actually take as much as they would wish because their electorate might react negatively. Yeah. And then, then, unfortunately, the democratic process will play and they may lose uh, the next elections in favor on an extreme right wing, so which will have an extremely negative effect on migration. So all this is a balance now so to inform that. Um, the best way is indeed to be prepared. And that's the kind of program we, we put in place in Nigeria, for example, but in other countries, is to not only to inform, but also to make sure that we respond to the main reason, the cause for which those people are leaving. Yeah, and, and the IOM has also been instrumental to helping some uh, people who have migrated irregularly back uh, to their home countries. Um, uh, the IOM in Nigeria has been, you know, quite um, um, but quite helpful, I would say, in bringing some people back. Even with, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown restrictions and people having to return back to the countries, IOM did help some people return. You're also looking into helping people who are also being um, dehumanized and maltreated in the countries, in the countries that they have been to. And then, you know, with migration policies, and these are the countries saying, you know, um, there's a lot of you here, we don't need so many people, and then they put them in migration camps and so on. Where is the IOM, you know, when, you know, um, these migrations, migrants become humanitarian crisis in the countries that they're heading to? Uh, no, we intervene as well uh, and trying to actually uh, defend and promote the human rights of all migrants. So that's part of our work uh, with each of our governments. We have a council of member states, so that's they, they, they commit. Then, of course, we have to be present on the ground, and, and not only us, but also with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, for example, uh, or NGOs, civil society, to promote the rights of migrants. Uh, we condemn or we write to the, to the government who are mistreating migrants or returning them uh, forcibly. This is something we are, we are uh, pleading against. We, we, if return should be organized, it should be voluntarily. So the organization is involved in preparing the person because um, returning, it might be, returning might be considered as a failure mm -hmm. and, and for the dignity of the person because there is a lot of hope on one individual by the family who has traveled. So the return, returning the person might be an humiliation for him or her, but also all the family circles. So we need to prepare that. That's what we are pre telling the governments that we must ensure a return in dignity because it will not serve the person who may be willing to leave immediately another way so we are we are, we are discussing it's a dialogue it's a it's pressure to a certain extent to the governments in providing uh, the, the right of the people um, to access the labor market okay they, indeed more and more governments are saying that if any attempt of entering their, their territory illegally yeah. will result in immediate deportation. It, I, think, I think I consider it as a preventive message on saying, please use the legal ways. Mm -hmm. I think it's a rhetoric message that they must say uh, to please, still but they? still exactly they go, so it's not enough. I think we need to really reinforce uh, the, the, the response to the root causes. And that's why this year we also speak about uh, a response involving all of the community. I think governments, whatever they do, they can't, they can't erect walls, people will still pass. I think it's much more to be done at the society level. We have to talk with the communities, the families, and it's uh, in every country. I think people are willing to welcome migrants, uh, but, but some do not understand it, and there is a so, so much of a hate discourse that some people may be influenced by. So, so they look at migrants as a danger. Uh, I think we have to work on this as well in, in the countries who, who need them.
Yeah, and and I know that some of the some of that fear, some of that xenophobia is rooted on you know increasing crime rates and so on, and they tend to blame that, you know, on migrant communities. I wanted to talk some more about Nigeria because um, what I'm reading here, and I'm sure that the figures have changed. Over three million people are suddenly displaced in Nigeria. 1.7 million largely unsettled returnees in the country. Could you expand some more on the situation here? Mm, those returnees are more those within the country so we because IOM is working on the people who have left the country cross a border but we also deal with the internal displacement and that's a displacement coast mainly northeast but also in the north uh, by, because of the the conflict situation or the tensions in the country so we work there as well to develop the conducive conditions for them to consider return and the return might be close to their places of origin so that's more related to this this specific situation of crisis. Also coupled to that, we have uh, operations to provide assistance to those who have been displaced by the floods, the recent floods. Yeah. And so also trying to rebuild better where they, they were coming from to allow them to return. In terms of return, from outside the country, we have we are dealing now with 30,000 people so far uh, since for the last last five years, and uh, and there we, we really try to have an individual support, and we do follow up at individual level, uh, first for learning the experience, mm -hmm. and also engaging them in passing a message. And I've been I'm, I've met them recently. I was in Edo State, uh, in Benin City. Um, it's quite impressive what the people go through, the resilience. It's so, uh, quite impressive, quite terrible, I would say. But they pass the message, and what I appreciated, I met different girls and boys, because they are generally quite young. Um, and some were there and said, I didn't migrate, but I'm with them, learning skills to understand how I can integrate my society, take my future in and in Nigeria. But, but the, the woman I have, the, the, young woman I met said, I intended to go. And it's by hearing them on the suffering they went through that I decided that it's, it's worth staying here. Because the, 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 the messages of them is far more powerful than whatever I can say or IOM can say. It's, and then, and then it's moving, in moving into considering their needs, uh, their profile, their skills, soft skills, qualification, and developing that into the how to integrate into the market. So it's job orientation. Changed the life of a lot. I, I, it was really, really nice to see hundreds of young people smiling, of being together, and knowing that they will get a job because the success rate of those we are working with, the civil society in Benin City, is, is, is fantastic. And that's really refreshing and, and, and encouraging to do more. Yeah, and I know that IOM does a lot of work in Nigeria. I've had, you know, the opportunity of, of seeing some of that work, in, and I've met some of the um, migrants who have returned and who are doing things. Some own, some have established NGOs. Mm, absolutely. Yes, mm. uh, some also have, uh, mm. you know, causes that they're pursuing, uh, their passions and so on, and they also want to be seen as a part of society, they want to be seen as human beings. That's uh, extremely yeah. important. It's not only economic, and you are totally yeah, right, it's exactly. a social recognition the role they can play and, and that's really really beautiful yeah. to see. Yeah. And with all of this work I'm sure there are challenges working in a country like Nigeria. I know you haven't been here long but the space of one month is enough to, <laughs> to, see, to see what the problems are, yeah. right? Well, I think the, 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 the most important one is the, the quantity of people. <laughs> uh, because what we are doing indeed, it's, it's an, unfortunately like it's just a part of the iceberg. So it's a model that we would like to replicate. And we are now discussing on actually how to, to enlarge the footprint, not, not ourselves, but to really engage with more multipliers. Private sector, I think, has a role to play. I think I want to make them, to involve them, make them accountable also to to develop the, the, and I think it's in their interest anyway, they will return, they will have return in investment by proposing and involving the youth in, in, in creating this uh, vibrant community of young people to doing business, self-business. So that's very, very important, but we have to look, the government is engaged. 
uh, but, but alone they can't. It's, it's too many. Uh, the government cannot create employment to the level of, of, of uh, those yearly looking for jobs. We see, if I compare, indeed, because I visited within cities, so, and, and so I look at the numbers of people we support. We have, and we have had a lot of return to Edo State, but now there is a new trend, and uh, we return people from Libya exclusively to Kano. It's totally new. It, it's, it happened like for, see, for the last three months. Is, is uh, it's increasing. Why they're being taken to Kano? Sorry? Is there a reason why they're being taken to Kano? And that's what we are trying to understand. It's too short to understand. But we have had uh, two, two charters arriving a week ago and yesterday. Our team are with the people and trying to understand why and how. We try to see whether, because, because the Edo State have been very engaged through the, the task force against irregular migration and trafficking in persons. And the society has been mobilized, so maybe it starts to have a result on those smugglers and traffickers understanding that the market, if I may say, mm. is going lower. And, but I don't know whether it would explain that they have moved to Kano and the reason why. But it's the trend we have seen now. Most of the people who are currently in Libya abandoning and giving up or being intercepted are exclusively from Kano. So it's something we need to address now and looking and understanding exactly uh, how is this operated. Because those migrants, those Nigerians coming back, they can identify those who have facilitated their transport. So uh, with that information, we can dismantle the network easily and work with the prosecutors, with the law enforcement agency. I don't think it's that complicated. It's putting those people together, those who have the information and the prosecutors. You, you get enough cooperation uh, with the prosecutors and the prosecution of these um, human smugglers? We have, no, no, we have absolutely excellent cooperation with NAPTIP, which is the, the national agency in charge, and, uh, and all the other uh, agencies. So, so that works perfectly well. So we have just to, to ensure that there is this link which is created at the level of the state. So that's what we, are, we will work on now. So the, the day recognized by the United Nations is on December 18. But I, I imagine that there are you know, programs and plans you have until probably for the next two weeks or so drawing attention to migration issues and migrant issues. Do you want to share some of those with us? Yes, this year um, it's, it's a campaign that we call I Am A Migrant. And actually uh, our director general and ask all of us uh, to discuss with all our partners and governments on promoting migration positively, but recognizing as well so the fact that majority of us we have dreamt about a better future and we may have considered migration so it's not something that we can condemn then those who have done it uh, they may have gone through difficult time and we want them to talk about it so it's a testimony uh, campaign so i am a migrant is looking for people to say yes i am a migrant it has been great, but I may have suffered. We have also worldwide an increase of people displaced forcibly by, we see climate change as impacting a lot. Oh, so yeah. we, we need them to talk and say, it's not my choice. I didn't want to, I would have loved to stay where I am with my family, but I have lost everything. So I am a migrant, but please bear with me. This is not what I, what I wanted. I had no other choice than to leave. So it's just having people talking about the fact that it might be very positive. Some may highlight, and I've seen some, some testimony which has wonderful, speaking about solidarity during their, their journey the assistance they receive, the welcoming also of some people who are very positive, because we always speak about migration as very a negative, negative discourse. Right. Yeah. But there are also beauty in, in migration. There are people who are changing a community, bringing changes, new culture, new way of thinking. They have created jobs. Mm -hmm. There are a number of companies in, 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 in the North America which are actually led by migrants. And uh, paying tax in the UK, uh, also so the, the millions of, of pounds paid yearly and job created. So this needs and to be said. And there are also you forget to mention that. Mm, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. No, so we, 
that, that's what we want to call. So there is this campaign, I am a migrant, is calling anyone to speak about their experience, positive, but also those highlighting the fact that it's an it's a extremely complex phenomenon. Right. So I am a migrant is on social media, and it's, yes. you have um, you know programs, uh, probably a seminar, a session, or something, uh, just to highlight that as well. Yeah. No, we do. We do call people to uh, register or record, and then post it on a, on our website uh, of the IOM, the global website of IOM, and then of course in Nigeria we do also contact and we we'll share that with everybody. Veronda Berg, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you discussing the issues, and we look forward to, um, you know, highlighting issues of uh, migration and migrants all over the world, even here in Nigeria. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. We have more coming up on the world today. When we come back, an icy dip wearing body armor. That's all happening in Siberia. Stay with us.